asked about your course, and he said Tua has a better understanding of where he wants to go with the football and, and how to deal with protections. Can you talk about what has been the key to, to developing in those areas? I think just being with our guys, uh, being able to sit down and, and talk with the linemen, uh, having meetings with the linemen, being able to talk with the running backs. Uh, overall, just communication with our guys. And it's not just with me, it's with our quarterback room. Um, you know, and us hearing what they have to say about what they see, and then us, uh, you know, kind of helping them with what we see in the back end. Honestly, I, I would say we're still putting in work. Um, you know, that's why we're all out here, um, you know, competing against each other. You know, regardless of what happens, um, you know, we're, we're just focused right now on, um, you know, taking it a practice at a time, a day at a time. But uh, we're really just focused on the things we need to, you know, get right right now. plan to play? I mean, I, I would say every week, you know, I'm planning to play. Um, you know, but... That's a that's a question for Coach Flo. Tua, last week we talked about you feeling pressure in the pocket and adjusting as needed. One of the best guys ever to do that was Marino because how he would sidestep pass rushers. Did you and he ever work together or talk about that? I've never uh, got the chance to work with Dan. Um, you know, but Dan will have some input. Um, you know, with what he feels, you know, we could do better in. Uh, you know, he sits down in our meetings and he helps us as quarterbacks. So, that, you know, I think that's really cool. <laughs> what was today like? Yeah, I, I think overall just the communication, the operation, um, you know, with us offensively, you know, it still needs some cleanup. Um, but really, that, that's, that's, that's what it's been today. Well, I think I think the wind plays a factor. Um, you know, when when you're throwing into the wind, uh, you got to be able to cut it. If not, you know, the wind's going to take it. Uh, but I think it's good work uh, to to be able to throw with and against the wind. So. Yeah, it's good to have all our guys back out here. Um, you know, to be able to work some timing and. Um, you know, get some work in with them, but I think the just them being able to get back into the huddle, hear calls, get out, know where they're lining up at, um, you know, and then executing with them. I think that's very important. Well, I felt like in last year's camp, I noticed a lot of um, plays where you throw the ball after rolling out. Well, this year, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like there's been a lot of work in the pocket. Has that been something that you and your coaches specifically wanted to emphasize? I think we're we're trying to work all aspects of um, you know our game in the quarterback room, um, you know, to get the defense moving. You know, we don't want to just be a drop back quarterback. We want to be able to move the pocket. Um, you know, have them see different things, different looks. Uh, that's really what it is. So how are you, Victor Ramirez from Miami Hurricanes Radio Network? Quick question about Alabama, Miami. What separates Nick Saban from the rest of college football coaches? Why are you guys always seem so ready for big time games? I mean, growing up, you know, you, you hear Nick Saban, you're like, that's Nick Saban. <laughs> I don't know. You see him in movies. Um, I mean, he's just he's just big time. I don't know. It's just something about his demeanor and the way he uh, he coaches his players and what he expects out of his coaches. You know, I, I think that's what makes him successful. What does Atlanta, the city playing there, mean to you guys since 2008? Alabama 13 and two in games played in Atlanta. Really, I, I've never put any thought into that. Um, you know, I I just try to do everything that I could for the program when um, you know I was there and I had my time there. But you know, I do understand you know how important you know Alabama football is in general, being being that I, I played there. So um, you know, whatever happens, it happens over there. I mean, that, <laughs> it's tough. I, I don't know what Alabama looks like. I don't know what the Hurricanes look like. So, you know, you just always hope that when you see two teams go against each other, it's a good game. Which leadership do you, or is there somebody who's been an especially good leader, divine leadership, or someone who has been 
Well, I, th I think a lot of our coaches, um, a lot of the, you know, the older players in the locker room, uh, you know, they show glimpses of their leadership. Uh, you listen, you can take some of the things that uh, you hear from them um, and implement it to your style of leadership. And I would say that's, uh, you know, a learning process that I'm still going through as well. Yeah, I mean, I, ha I haven't texted Mac. I haven't been able to talk to him since he's been drafted. Um, you know, but I've, I've seen them play. You know, he's doing pretty good. Um, you know, I hope when he does get his opportunity, you know, he makes the best of it. Uh, but, you know, we're, you can't wish him too much of, of, of luck because, you know, we're, we're rivals in the same division. So, um, yeah, but I wish him the best of luck for sure.